the Confederation of Young Entrepreneurs Ghana invites you to its maiden conference under the theme Achieving Economic Stability Through Young Enterprises Support. Let's talk a little bit about Coco because it's very really significant in, uh, in Ghana. Coco actually originated from South Africa. South America. It's not from Ghana, it's not from Nigeria, it's not from, it's from South Africa. And these people call Mayan and Aztec, their civilization of the whole, their civilization long before the whites became civilized. I need to put that in because many times when we talk about civilization, it's not like we talk about Egyptian civilization, Greek or Roman, but these people have been, have been civilized for a very long time. And they're in the, uh, they're in the uh, North and South America. They've been taking cocoa as a medicine for more than a millennium. However, when they, when they were conquered in 1528 by the Spanish, the Spanish took the cocoa to Europe, and they had a sugar to eat, and they started drinking it, and they loved it. In 1928, cocoa press was invented, mm -hmm. and that made them to squeeze uh, the butter out of the powder. That became sweet. That becomes more, that created more demand for cocoa around the world. And it became a very big thing, because in Europe, most of the food that they eat is very black. So they see things like cocoa, that you can add sugar to, that is very nourishing. They jump at it. So by 1850, Portuguese established the first cocoa plantation in Sao Tome and, and Principal. Now, that started the race. But I don't forget by 18, if you know your issue very really well, by 18th century, by 18, the, uh, 19th century, they uh, started really dividing Africa. So the European, one of the reasons why they wanted to take over Africa is not like Nigeria, 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 which is uh, Canary, which is an uh, which is only forest, was cocoa. They wanted to, they, they saw the weather, they saw the terrain in Ghana, they saw the terrain in West Africa. They, they looked at the one in Amazon, so they wanted to plant cocoa. Now, I wanted to look at this statistic very, uh, look at this date. So, British started in uh, the Dutch, were well, the first people to bring cocoa to the coastal area of Ghana, coastal belt of Ghana, in 1801. They tried very hard to plant cocoa. They were not successful. They abandoned it. In 1815, the British bought scientists at Botany. That is, they bought their best scientists who knows about horticulture, who knows about growing things. All they wanted to do was to grow cocoa in a large volume. And after 10, 15 years, they could not do it, they failed. Why? Because they don't know the intelligence. They know about the anatomy and physiology of, of, of plants, but they don't know about African terrain. They didn't know. So in 1815, they were not so they, they could not, they could not, they, they, they abandoned the idea. In 1827, now I want to look at the country that are trying to plant cocoa in large quantity in, um, in Africa. They were not successful. The Dutch, the Brits, the Brits are very, very good. But they could not plant cocoa in, in, in Ghana. Then the Swiss missionary came and they too tried for many years to turn plant cocoa plantation in West Africa, especially in Ghana. They could not. That for over 100 years, every attempt by the Europeans. You know, there are very few things that, you know, okay, I'm putting, I'm setting this place so that you can know by the time I mention the guy I want to mention, you can know the content. Because I know you must know the guy. But the content, you need to know the content before you can appreciate what you did. For 100 years, every attempt by the European to plant cocoa in large volume failed and was not successful. And these are the top renowned war scientists of those times. They are like, um, how would I put it? They are like uh, Einstein of those days. And they could not, they could not, they could not plant cocoa in, the, in West Africa. That's right. Now, while this was going on, Tetequashi was born. I'm, I'm sure, who doesn't know Tetequashi here? If anyone doesn't know the question, I will ask for their passport. I'm going to see their passport. Because he's my hero. If you don't, have, if you don't know him, you feel my chest. I won't look at you as a Ghanaian. Because to me, he's my, he has been my hero for a long time. And that's why I'm so happy sharing the story about him. The question was born in 1842. Why this was going on? So nobody doesn't know that was going on. His father doesn't even know what was going on. He grew up and specialized and became a, uh, uh, a blacksmith. And uh, he specialized in making iron tools for cocoa plantation. You know everything that they need, the sickle and everything that they're going to need to plant. And in those days, farming, everybody is a farmer, so farming was his hobby. In 1817, he undertook a, undertook a voyage to Fernando Po, very significant. And um, the traveling out of is not the problem. A lot of Ghanaians travel to the country. It's what we bring back that matters. When he was coming back to Ghana, he bought some few cocoa. He said six. I don't know, I didn't, count, I didn't know whether they counted. 
But what is a criminal? He could have brought many, he could have brought many things back from there. He has an expert. He traveled abroad. When he was coming back, what did he bring back? And that is what is so important. He came back with cocoa pots. Not even the chocolate. Because he was in a chocolate plantation. He could have brought chocolate back. He brought cocoa pots. And started trying it using what he has learned in Fernanda Pool and his knowledge about Ghana and the farming terrain. And in 1879, it was heavily planted and lost the first set of seed at Mampon. I would have been to Mampon yesterday, it was Kwame's uh, fault that made sure I didn't go to Mampon because I wanted to be able to, to tell you that I was on the land. <laughs> you don't understand why this is very important to me. It's not only important to you in Ghana, I'm going to tell you, put it in context. So, he distributed the seed to other people and they started planting it. And that's how cocoa plantation began in Ghana. Next slide. By 1893, approximately about 20 years after he traveled, Ghana exported the first cocoa outside this, uh, to Europe. Actually, there were two bags of cocoa. But in those days, two bags of cocoa was a big thing because don't forget that for 100 years, everybody else has tried to grow cocoa in Africa and they've not been successful. But unfortunately, he died a year before that export took place. So he didn't live to see it. Coco became Ghana, Ghana's chief agricultural and main cash crop. And between 1910 and 1980, Ghana was the largest producer of cocoa exporter in the world. Ghana had hundreds of millions of hundreds of millions. Now why is it relevant to me? It's this last one. From Ghana, cocoa beans was spread to Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Cameroon, and Ivory Coast. Next slide, please. Product nurtured and cultivated by this man at the expense of everything. As it earned Ghana $2 billion annually. As employed, employed more than 4 million household farmers in Ghana. Over the last 100 years, you have exported 100 billion worth of cocoa. Over the last 100 years. Well, that's even small compared to. By the time you said it's in. By the time his idea came to Nigeria, Ghana, and Sierra Leone and Cameroon, West African countries, those four countries, have exported 300 billion worth of cocoa over the last 100 years through the activity of one man. That's to show you what is capable, what you are, what you are, what is possible if you really put your mind to it. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, we're going to look at his life a little bit, but this is the pretty thing. Right now, his idea. It's focused. It's because it's, it, it's giving employment to more than 20 million farmers in West Africa as a whole. Just one idea of one man. So I want you to leave this place knowing that if God lays something in your heart, if you believe you're supposed to do something, put your mind into it because you don't know how many. You, it might not. It might be. It might be more than your family that you're going to bless. It might be nations. When God was talking to Abraham, he said, "I will bless. I will you, be, you, 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 you look unto nations." These are the kind of man he's talking about, the question. How many of the girls that we know that has ever, has ever lived in Africa? If you don't just make a living, it makes a difference. To me, it's not just an entrepreneur, it's a game changer. Next slide, please. Now, that brings me straight away to who is an entrepreneur? Who are you guys? I think it's very important for me to help you to understand very clearly what you are capable of. And what, why is it that this kind of meeting we should not have taken this or we should have taken the biggest role in UPSA? What always happens at the beginning like this is that people don't value things on these flourishes. However, the people that come in first, if you do your bit, you'll be the first particle of what's going to happen from COVID. <laughs> Thank you.